Hey guys, welcome back to some more Standard. I hope you guys have had a great weekend so far. And I'm really excited about this deck I've been working on. I'm kind of getting back to some of my roots with Mono Red Aggro. Um, just love how this has been performing on the ladder. I haven't actually um, ran it here on my computer, so I don't have data behind it. Uh, but I have been jamming some games on my tablet, and it's been working really well. So hopefully, you know, that'll end up showing here in the data as well. But um, just to, before I get into it, first of all, I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you're new here um, and you like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend, dropping a comment or a like. Um, that really does help the channel. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for your support. I really do appreciate you. You guys are the backbone and you guys mean everything to me. So thank you so much. So getting back to the deck, um, this is kind of similar to the... Um, standard event uh, mono red deck that I ended up going seven and two with um, a couple, maybe a week or two ago. And it was kind of in a response to the meta sort of shifting so heavily into Boros Convoke. Um, and this is kind of how we fight back is mono red. So um, what I was doing is I was initially running four copies of Mechanized Warfare and four copies of End the Festivities. And then I think two copies of Tectonic... Um, whatever it's called the basically it's like a, the fifth and sixth copies of end the festivities except it's a different card and it doesn't hit planeswalkers but it hits the opponent and it hits um, creatures for one damage each so i uh i found that after a number of games um mechanized warfare kind of began to feel like kind of an already winning card where um the games that i had it i was sort of and i won i was sort of already winning and it was great um, but where I really needed like an answer against like Boros Convoke or if I just kind of stalled out and I had uh, Mechanized Warfare but I couldn't get off any other threats, it sort of felt like a dead card. So I'm not saying it's not a good card, but I just felt like I actually didn't really need it against Boros Convoke. Um, usually End the Festivities is good enough by itself. If you can try to get it off before they can drop down uh, War Leader's Call so they can puff up their, um, buff up their team, that's really great. So, you know, obviously if they get the War Leader's Call first, it's kind of awkward. But there's a lot of situations where they just don't have it. Um, you know, many versions of Boros Convoke these days are running maybe only two or three copies of War Leader's Call. And there's also ample opportunities before they kind of get that off where they're trying to set up for their first Knight Errant where you can just, you know, blow up their um, Gleeful Demolition tokens or their, you know, other random 1-1s. One and uh, it's great. So four copies of End the Festivities. I found that the Tectonic, uh, again, I, I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically the same card. Um, you know, running more than four copies kind of felt like it was weakening the deck to other matchups, um, specifically Blue White Control, which didn't really care about this sort of effect. Um, having a couple copies is nice, especially with End the Festivities, because it does hit... Um, Wandering Emperor, it hits, uh, you know, Planeswalker, so you can have like a series of events where you attack with a creature, they play their Wandering Emperor, they exile it, gain two life, they're left with one counter, and then you end the festivities and just nuke their Wandering Emperor, which is great. It's also good against um, the uh, the Sunset tokens where they, you know, gain life and make the two one ones. so it's kind of nice there. But uh, basically the plan of the deck is it's really kind of focusing on making prowess even better. We've got four copies of Fugitive Codebreaker, which is the 2-1 prowess haste um, card from the new set that comes in. And then if you disguise it and then flip it up later, you can sort of refill your hand, which um, can happen sometimes, but it's not the usual mode for this card. So we've got the creature count is pretty low. We only have 12 creatures in the deck. Um, Technically, we have 16 with Kumano, but we've got Kumano faces Kakazan, Monastery Swift Spear, Fugitive Codebreaker, and then I opted for um, three copies of Bloodthirsty Adversary and one copy of Feldon. Um, part of the reason here is that Adversary is good with higher land counts, and I wanted to build this deck so that it was really using the land to the best, um, you know, nth degree possible. So I ended up jamming in four copies of Soken Zen, four copies of Mishra's Foundry, two copies of Myrix. Um, I initially had four copies of Myrix, but I just found that I just had too many games where I had sort of um, 
a Mirix token that had already been used, and then a bunch of Mishra's Foundries, and I couldn't actually cast my spells. So it is possible to have too many, you know, non-red sources. And so I kind of settled on four Foundry, two Mirix, and then the four tokens in. And I, I want to give a huge shout out. Um, one of my viewers mentioned earlier, you know, why don't you just consider running for Iganjo in like the mono white deck? And I'm like, oh, I never thought of that. And it's actually brilliant. It's seriously amazing. So running four copies, especially when you have a higher land count, like 24 land, you know, it's a land when you need it. It's removal or a threat when you need it. Um, it's great. I, I really, I have not looked back after running four copies. You know, maybe it's possible I'll eventually settle on like three copies or something, but having Soken Zin as an extra threat is really, really clutch and it's definitely stolen some games. So I have 24 lands and part of the reason for such a high land count, again, is that um, I want to make sure that I'm getting the most out of my lands. Um, this makes Adversary really good, especially against Boros Convoke because early game, you end the festivities, clear out, and then they rebuild, and then you hit five land, Bloodthirsty Adversary, and just do it again, and it's backbreaking. So that's really nice. It also helps with Codebreaker, so sort of later game or mid game. If you have enough mana, you can refill your hand, uh, which is great. And then, you know, you also have these extra lands to kind of act as additional mana sinks to do stuff with. So for the three drop, I had initially been running uh, Godric, and Godric is, is a great card, but it's not really set up so great for this deck because there's not a lot of cards that come in that produce, um, you know, two permanents in one card. We have a couple in Sokens in, but we're, we're not running like Squee, we're not running um, Charming Scoundrel, we're not running um, Epicure, Voldar and Epicure. So those are all cards that want to play with Godric, and I just wanted to do a different kind of style deck. So I found that replacing the Mechanized Warfares with Invasion of Ragatha is actually really big game. This makes this deck kind of more of like a burn deck. The fact that it can do one damage to a creature is super relevant against like Boros Convoke. Like I have a turn, you know, I've had turns where I go like Invasion with like one damage on their, you know, two toughness guy and then end the festivities and just wipe their board and it's completely backbreaking. Um, being able to target your own Feldon with this is great. So you can get additional card advantage for the one damage is a nice kind of combo there. And then I also wanted to run four copies of Invasion of Tarkir because this is just Red's best answer to other creature decks. And it is, you know, completely backbreaking once you can get your dragon down and just completely invalidate them out of the game. So I felt like this deck just wanted more burn. Um, and even if it didn't get, you know, that many creatures or it couldn't stick a creature for that long, you still have your man lands to really kind of get things going. Um, you've got the Sokens and Tokens, you have Mishra's Foundry, which is also really good against Blue-White Control that's constantly board wiping turn after turn. This lets you keep something on the field to stay aggressive. So I just kind of fell into this higher land count deck and really liked it. Um, one thing you'll notice here is that there are no copies of Monstrous Rage, which is a fantastic card. However, it does require a certain number of creatures, and this is a very low creature deck. So instead of having, you know, some number of Monstrous Rage, certainly you could play around with it. I decided for kind of a higher spell count with Play With Fire, Lightning Strike, Invasion of Tarkir, um, Invasion of Ragatha, and the Festivities. So kind of more focused on fewer creatures and more spells, closer to like a, a, a true burn deck. So... Anyways, that's the main board. I did build a sideboard for you guys playing best of three. Even though I don't really play best of three much, I definitely respect it and I wanna make sure that I'm you know, helping viewers who do play best of three look at that. So I, I gave a lot of thought to the sideboard and this mirrors in a lot of ways the sideboard that I've been running a couple months ago with my mono red aggro deck, which I think is still super relevant. So you've got four copies of Lithomatic Barrage, uh, Lithomatic Barrage, which is great against blue-white control. It can deal with planeswalkers. It can deal with, you know, if they end up running, um, what is it, the, the foundry chief guy, the 5-5 five, five flyer that can get lifelink or whatever um, out of the board. Super great against him. And uh, against, you know, mono-white humans, it's 
you know, it's still great probably um, against Boros Convoke because you can deal with like their Knight Errant easily. So yeah, just all around great in a lot of matchups. And then you have four copies of Twisted Fealty. This is really good against like, you know, your mono black uh, control decks that have Shieldred or like big green decks, you know, Golgari, just huge creatures that are hard to deal with that are really dangerous. And then, you know, you just take them and then you kill them with them. Um, and then you've got Urbrask's Forge, four copies here, which is great against Blue White Control because Temporary Lockdown does not hit it, and you just have continuing threats so they can't board wipe every turn. Um, so it's great against Control, it's great against any kind of like Jund um, Golgari deck that just wants to, you know, one for one remove you, uh, all of your creatures, you know, to the nth degree. And then you can just not care about that with Urbrask's Forge. So it's really nice there. Um, you do want to make sure to take care of their Glissa. So you've got three copies of Witchstalker's Frenzy, which is really good against Boros Convoke. They provide sort of all the creatures, so you can play it for, on the cheap. And then you can deal with their, you know, their Knight Errants. It's good against, uh, like I said, Golgari or like bigger creatures. So kind of bring in as you need. So if I were to like play against like Blue White Control, for example, um, what I might do is I might like cut the end the festivities, um, which is a little bit weaker. Um, it, it's okay. I mean, it hits there, like I said, sunset tokens, but um, it's a little bit weaker. You could maybe cut like end the festivities um, and or some number of play with fire and then bring in like Lithomantic Barrage and four copies of Urbrask's Forge and just, you know, maximize all of your burn and yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Um, you know, if you were against like Boros Convoke, I'd bring in four copies of Lithomantic Barrage and three copies of uh, Wishdocker Frenzy. And then you'd probably cut something like maybe Play With Fire because it's not as good or and or Kumano Faces Kakazan. These are kind of weaker cards against Convoke. Um, and then you just burn them out of everything and get your dragons going and yeah, take it all the way to the bank. So that's the deck. Let's get into some games. Also, I did want to mention here, um, I just realized, again, now that I am monetized, I am very, very, you know, it's it's so great to be able to have hit a thousand subscribers. Um, if you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you wanna leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it, you don't have to, but if you wanna show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. And uh, yeah, this hand looks great. Um, two tokens in, again, not worried about having extra copies. As long as we have two land, we can do basically everything this deck needs to do. It pretty much stops on two, with the exception of the um, one of the invasions. But I've just been really happy running extra copies of Sokens in. And it's nice because you can always like float it for a turn where if you really need three mana, you can, you know, tap it and then play the next one. But yeah, right here, we'll just go ahead and get rid of this pesky warden with invasion and start working on that. And this is really nice because if we can get um, dragon going, it's, um, it can be lights out for this deck. Also, with the amount of burn that this deck has, it's really easy to flip these invasions. Plus, the other invasions are great at flipping these invasions, so <laughs> that's kind of a nice benefit also. Yeah, you'll see right here, uh, we could just invasion here and then um, target like up to one target creature if they had like an X1 right here. But I think, what do we want to do? We could ensure the dragon this turn. We could also just play something else out. Yeah, you know, I think I'm just going to get Dragon going. Alright, so let's tap this for red. 
Get another Sokens in going. And Invasion. Okay, we'll target the battle. And sure, we can hit their creature for one. Um, and then I don't think we need to flip this other invasion. Uh, now we just can kind of go face here. So we could if we wanted to. I, I just don't think it's... Yeah. I don't think it's super necessary. We could also just flip it with Defiant Thundermon next turn if we really wanted to. Might be fun, kind of fun, actually. I, you know, I guess we could go that direction. <laughs> or they just scoop, and that works too. But yeah, the the invasion of Regatha is really nice because it helps flip the other invasion super easily. And what I also like is, even though Monstrous Rage is a really great card, you have to be careful about when you play it. Like, you got to find a window where they don't have removal for it because um, you can just get blown out, obviously. And without having pump it kind of removes a lot of that sort of uh, variability where you kind of opening yourself up to get blown out okay this hand looks great also the games are super fast with this deck it's just really quick which is nice and I think it's pretty well positioned against blue white control which is sort of my ultimate nemesis <laughs> just because I hate the long games alright we are up against blue white control so let's try to get our code breaker going um, and just being I guess a little cognizant that they could have like temporary lockdown but let's try to get the damage in when we can So here I want to be a little careful. Um, yeah, this is rough because if they've got removal, then we've got kind of a slow start. If they have lockdown, they could get like a three for one. And the festivities is good later. It's all yeah, it's good if they've got sunset. I think. Hmm. I think I will send the swift spear out here. Um, they could get us on a three for one, but I think that it's nice to push damage while we can. Oof. No, you know, I think I'm just going to stick with the two creatures here. So I think let's just attack with these two, see what they do. I want to check for lockdown. Um, I will go fire to face right now, though, just to get the extra two damage. Okay, and that's nice. The fact that they're not doing anything, if they don't kill anything here. Okay, so by them casting Get Lost, we know there's a decent chance they don't have Lockdown in their hand. Otherwise, they would have just taken it and then just locked down next turn. So I think maybe what we do here is we play out a Swift Spear and then use one of these tokens to buff up one of the Swift Spears as kind of like a hedge instead of playing this adversary. So they, if they have lockdown, it's super rough, but based on the way they played, I don't think they had it. Okay, now this is great because we were um, very controlled and held back on festivities. So now we just have a fabulous turn here where we can just end the festivities. We could also go Adversary here. Again, Adversary, if they've got the lockdown, we could get blown out. So I think maybe what I'd rather do is like use this map token instead. And then hold this in case they do have the lockdown. Okay, Invasion is a great follow-up. Now we'll just end the festivities. And play with fire. Now they're dead on board unless they do something. Oh. 
if all they have is Emperor here, um, they go to eight, and then we'll go down to one. So, yeah, I guess we just do it to see what they do. Okay, no more lies. Still need another answer here. Okay, and they've got the march. All right, so they do have Emperor. I've learned much during my guidance. My judgment is fun. Now I think we just take out their Emperor. This Emperor is still a threat. And they've got Jace. I think we can hold the mountain for now. We are going to need some more action, though, here soon. Is there any reason that we need to play this mountain? I don't think so, not yet. Okay, so now we've got adversary, which is great. We can use that for play with fire. And if they counter it, then they won't be able to activate their anchorage. Perfect top deck. And now they've got a chump with their anchorage, unless they've got some more removal. So yeah, now they, even if they have board wipe, they still die. Okay, lockdown is good, but it's not enough. I need that plus more action. And we've got the Kumano faces Kakazan. Oh yeah. Few things make me happier than beating blue white control. Such a good feeling. By the way, I don't know if you guys um, do like Limited, but I was just watching some of the Arena Open Day 2 drafts, and it's super fun to watch. So, yeah, there's a couple drafters I really like. Um, but, uh, okay, this is a great hand. Yeah, let's, let's jump in with this. Yeah, an adversary with 24 land is so much better than adversary without 24 land. Uh, just being able to, like, reliably recast spells is super huge. Alright, we'll get our adversary going here.
And then we've got the play with fire in response if they want to do something. Oh, this is perfect. We've got a nice double festivities turn. Feels super good. I think we're going to hold on to the Sokens in case we draw a land. Definitely nasty here. Um, oh, can we race it? So next turn we're taking seven damage down to three if we if they've got nothing. We can push four this turn. Next turn we could push another six. Plus one, not quite enough. Hmm. I guess we could try to block Squee. How much do they have? They don't have much in the graveyard, so maybe that's the play, is just like use our Sokens in to try to get them that way. If we draw, like what can we draw to get out of this though? Like if we push for four, they don't have lightning strike or something else. I think we have enough. Oh God. Hmm. Yeah. I think we hold, unfortunately. Hmm. I think because they have access to all of their mana, maybe it's better to hold. Like I was trying to think, like what kind of top decks we could have that could get us the win. I guess like if we had attacked for four, they drop to eight. We play invasion. Invasion of Ragatha off the top would win, if they had nothing, but that's a big, big ask. Here we could kill the Squee. We have to a triple block it in case they've got like monstrous rage otherwise we could like block here and then try to set up take five go down to ten if they have monstrous rage that doesn't get them there yeah I think we've got to deal with the squee unfortunately This is nice. And the festivities is okay here, but it's not amazing. I feel like we almost kind of have to though. I think we, we've got to use the festivities just to kind of clean some of this up. Now we can push for one. 
they can come back for three, but we've got Mishra's. I guess the other thing is like, we checked for Monstrous Rage last turn. If they had it, they would have used it. They didn't have it, so maybe they don't have it now. All right, they've got something. Maybe they have like play with fire, something like that. So I think we just block Kumano, hope they don't have the rage. Yeah, there's the play with fire. got adversary <clears throat> yeah tough beat maybe we could have held back a little bit more on some of our um, board wipes there with the uh with the end of the festivities but it seemed like a really good place to use them, so it's hard to know. I will say that I haven't seen as much mono red. Um, so, yeah, like this deck is a bit more tuned against like Boris Convoke. And uh, blue white control. On the draw, I'm really tempted to keep this. I mean, we've got like stuff to do for the first three turns. I'm just going to keep this. This looks amazing. This might be crazy, but. <laughs> Okay, never didn't have it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, but seriously, like, even if we didn't draw a land there, like, we have, you know, the Swift Spear, Swift Spear, Kumano. This is obviously a much better draw, but... Virtue, nasty. Okay, yeah, it's possible I should have played around that against Esper. Yeah, now I think we just have to lightning strike this out of here. We don't have enough for the ward cost, so I think that's the play. So maybe we can still push a little bit of damage. Okay, now... We can Swift Spear... We could also just attack, see what they do, and then lightning strike for the word cost. And I think it's worth it because, like, if they haven't got Rafine, they've got nothing. So I think maybe we just attack, see what they do, and then set up with another line of attackers. Okay, and they're going for it. Hundred percent worth it to deal with their Rafine. Okay, this is our moment for uh, <laughs> getting rid of their tokens if we were going to draw in the festivities here. But I think instead, let's just invasion. Dragon is still pretty good here. OK, 
Okay, that was nice. So I think we just get Dragon going. Um, and then just, yeah, and then just sit. They've got this Virtue of Loyalty, which is going to be super nasty. Otherwise, I guess we could get a 2-2 two -two before it gets bigger. That would make us have a 2-3, two a 2-2, two -two, and a 3-4. Then we could swing in, get the Tarkir going, but they'd gain some life in the process and take out one of our guys. Is it worth it? I mean, these will get huge, so maybe it is worth it. We could also have removal on hand. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do the sort of the safe play here. Just getting rid of their invasion. If they've got removal or counters. Actually, they don't have counters, but they could have removal. I guess we could actually also push on this invasion. They could kill like our 2-3, and then if we trade for these 2-2s, two I'm actually kind of fine with it. Since we're not like doing a whole lot on the ground. And getting rid of these 2-2s two would be huge. So I'm not sure if that exchange is worth it or not, but I think it was definitely good to get rid of these tokens before they get enormous. Okay, invasion is pretty sweet. So we can use invasion to get rid of the other invasion. Can also set up here with code breaker. Yeah, I guess invasion is kind of maybe just better going at face. So maybe we just like swing, get this with our other Thunder Maw, and then invasion after that. I think that's the play. Actually, I guess we could have swung at that, did the two damage to a 3-3, three, three, and then also hit one of their, uh, their other creatures. Hmm. Yeah, now invasion is looking less attractive. I think I just want... Do I want Codebreaker here? So they can push for a lot. I think maybe we just try to race him in the air, go for invasion. Hmm. Do we trade? If we trade, we haven't got much going on is my only issue. So I think we just take the four, let them gain the life. Danica's gonna be rough for sure. Now we can invasion and get Ragatha going, which is a four four prowess. She can at least block something here. Oh, yeah, unfortunately we're kind of getting overpowered by these the virtue and all these loyalties festivities. I think we kind of need, need a Hail Mary here, so I think we got to get this invasion out of the way. Because...
Yeah, maybe we had to block Denik last turn, because now it's just huge. Yeah, and we're just taking 16, so we block like this, go to 1. And then they've got, yeah, virtue. I think we're just done. Okay, with Wandering Emperor, that's going to do it for sure. So I think the early misplay of running into Virtue of Loyalty on 2 definitely cost us that losing that uh, Monastery Swift Spear. Forgot that Esper also runs Virtue. Um, so let's have a look here at the stats. Actually, let's do one more game here. I think we're uh, currently 2-2 two and two with it. like to kind of tie break a little bit. Okay, this opening hand looks great. Okay, blue black, beseech the mirror. This is the combo deck. Goes super fast. Uh, let's just go Codebreaker, try to push damage. Okay, now we can get Invasion plus Kumano. So let's see, if we go after Invasion, I think that takes too long. We, we just wanna go face here. Okay, that was a nice pickup. So now we can go Codebreaker into Lightning Strike. And then try to burn him out next turn. That's gonna do it. Nice, always nice to end on a win. Okay, so I think the data is gonna show us here 60% win rate right now, three and two. Uh, let's take a quick look at it. Yeah, so currently three and two. Gonna try to get some more games under my belt here. But it's always nice to be able to have um, kind of wins against blue white control i'd like to get some games here against boris convoke just to show you kind of how those play out and uh yeah we'll get back into it so look forward to seeing you guys here in the next one again thanks so much for support and you guys are awesome